Now normally I don't have much use for remote display or displaying the image from the thermal onto my telephone, but there was cold air coming down the hillside of the bottoms where I was set up. And I wanted to be in the truck and be warm, so I set up the Rick's Pocket K2 on a tripod watching the blind spot behind the truck. And while I was sitting here looking out the windows and checking the phone to see what was coming across in the area behind the truck, I saw a coyote come loping by. Gave me enough time to get out and get set up. And this was my only activity for about two hours at a time. Now this field had a bunch of rooting spots in it. Hogs had been here, or at least one hog had been here, and had rooted up about 50 or 60 different little spots. I was hoping it would come back. In the meantime, watching this coyote, probably out there at about 150 yards doing its business, and working its way a little bit closer. Well, with no hogs, Carpe Caster moved on to another part of the property, and we've got beavers in the lake. I must admit to being a little bit surprised that the storm did not rise to the occasion. And while I did get an excellent kill on this beaver, the view on the water just isn't what I would have expected. Now that beaver was probably at about 50 yards. This one is probably closer to about 130 yards. It sounded like a good hit, but that can be misleading on the water. I don't see a body floating up. So this isn't going to be one I can count. And this is the same beaver, I believe, coming in again. And at this point, I'm just slow panning with the beaver, getting comfortable on the shooting sticks, waiting for the opportunity to take my shot. Again, sounded like a good hit, but that is not diagnostic on the water. And again, no body. So I'll be back with the Tour T20 and see what I can do about the beavers. In the meantime, Carpe Seuss. Well, I don't know how many times I've shown y'all shooting hogs from this point, but we spy hogs across the creek. We come down the hill to this location where there's a low water crossing across the creek, and there's this nice opening in the trees. And that's where I'm standing now, looking through that gap in the trees. Hogs out there at about 120 yards. I'm now moving to my rifle, trying to move and not step in any of the holes that have water in them. And now I've got the rifle turned on and I'm out at about 120 yards as well. But I don't think I want to shoot from here, so I'm going to go ahead and move up. Now at this point, I'm going to have to negotiate the other standing water mud puddles. You're going to see me go around this last one. This one's actually a pretty good size hole that I don't want to step into. And with a little bit of good luck, you can see the hog on both screens. And so the hog's presenting a frontal view, and I'm going to take a frontal high shoulder shot, hoping for a spine. Not going to get it. So the hog takes off. I've broken the shoulder, and I've shredded one of the lungs at this point. And I don't want to shoot a tree, and I line up. That's a tree. And I shot a tree. Finally, with the last shot, through the spine, and the hog is down and done. I went ahead and stayed on the hog for a bit, just to make sure it didn't get up, and of course it didn't. Well, he turned out to be a kind of scrawny looking hog, coming in at about 170 pounds, but I'll take that as a victory, even with the two errant shots. Brass Catcher by Tactical Brass Recovery Despite being a little bit scrawny, had a nice set of cutters on him, this was going to be a formidable boar someday. Carpe Seuss, my friends. 